Hi guys, future Georgette here. I just wanted to pop in and let you know that this video was recorded a few months ago during the autumn months, but I still wanted to post it because I'm really interested in hearing what you guys have to say about traveling with your sewing supplies. Also, I wanted to wish everyone a very happy, happy holiday season and a prosperous and healthy new year. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Hi there, Georgette here. Welcome back to my channel, GA Rogers, and thank you for joining me. So today I thought it might be fun to share a little bit of my vacation. Now recently I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee and northern parts of Georgia on a little vacation and I was actually able to get some sewing stuff done while I was there and I thought it might be fun to show you guys how I did that. Okay, so before we left I knew that we would be moving every few days but each place would have a small area for me to work from. So like a desk in a hotel room, one of those pull out desks in a hotel room or a kitchen table. I also knew that I was gonna have a lot of spare time on my hands and that I'd have no Wi-Fi. So I wanted to make sure that I brought some sewing stuff with me to keep myself entertained. And I knew whatever I chose, it needed to be lightweight it needed to fit in my suitcase and it needed to be easily movable. So after having a look around my sewing room, I decided that tracing patterns kind of fit all of these needs. So I packed a bunch of patterns with me um, and I took them on the road. They were easily movable. They fit in my suitcase. Everything was all good. And I actually was able to get a few of them traced out. And I'll insert some video of this a little bit later. I didn't get that much video of the actual vacation. I mean, I was so enjoying myself that it didn't even occur to me to pick up the camera. I did get a few bits and pieces here and there, so I will also insert that. All right, so before we get into the video, I wanted to give a shout out to some small businesses that we made purchases from. Um, when we were in downtown Chattanooga, we ran across this craft fair and we went inside and we actually bought a few things. So the first up is from Essential Things and it's this car diffuser. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Here, let me try to drop that. Hang on. Okay, it's this car diffuser. I just thought this was brilliant. This is genius. So the essential oil is in the bottle and then the lid is kind of, it's, it's like wood, it's kind of made of the same material as those reed diffusers. And what you do is you open it up, you pop off this little top right here. Let's see if you guys can see that, there you go. Oh, there it is, all right. So you open it up, you pop off this little plastic top and then you screw your wood top back on and you just hang it from your car. This I just thought was brilliant. I've never seen a car diffuser like this before and I'm probably very late to the game. And the really wonderful thing is, is that you can buy the refills from her. She'll ship you the refills for these little um, car diffusers. I mean, I love the packaging of it. I love this little wood cap. I love this rope that you can put in your car and then this bead at the top, it's like a wooden bead, is adjustable. So I just, I love everything about this product and I just think it's kind of fun. So that was the first one. It's from Essential Things and I will put all of the information, the contact information in the description of, um, of this video. All right, the second vendor that we purchased from um, was Artisan Works by Anne. Now we picked up this, I guess it's kind of like a scrapbook but all of these pages inside are hand dyed by the artist. She, she hand dyed all of this. She bound the book. She put on these cute little tassels over here. Um, and you can even close the book if you want. She's got a latch that you can close this book up. So this was one of the things that we purchased. It's gonna be used kind of as a scrapbook for us. So the second item that we purchased was this ring. I don't know if you can see that. Try that. There you go. So she, she makes these rings as well. This, I believe she said to me, was aluminum, I think is what she said to me. 
And I usually wear it on my thumb. However, it is adjustable, so you can wear it on whichever ring you want. And she did all kinds of jewelry, too. So there was earrings and necklaces. There was all kinds of jewelry. She did paintings. She had a lot of really beautiful things. But I will leave that in the description as well. All right, so the final two places that we made purchases from, I don't have their information on me right now. If I find their information, I will definitely put it in the description below. But I did want to mention them because I thought they had a really awesome product as well. So the first one was a candle company. We bought a candle. And the scents were awesome, but what was even more awesome was that he gives you these tips on how to make your candle last longer. And he was super knowledgeable about just the science behind candles and candle wicks. And he just, he knew his product. And I was just very impressed by that because I do believe that you should know, know your product, you know, do, do research, know your craft. And he really, really knew that. And he also hosts classes on how to make candles as well. He's booked up, I think, for the next few months. But uh, I did want to mention him. If I find his information, I'll definitely put it in the description below. And the final place that we made a purchase from was a flower vendor. Again, I don't have their information on me, but these flowers were absolutely gorgeous. And they were huge. The thing that impressed me the most was it was these gigantic arrangements of these really large flowers. And I think the smaller arrangement was 15 bucks. We got the larger, larger arrangement for 30. So I have a picture, but it's only of one flower. And it's from maybe four days after we got the flower arrangement. So I'll insert that here. Again, if I can find the information, I will put it in the description box below or maybe in this video somewhere. If you are in, if you happen to be in the downtown Chattanooga area, like on a weekend, we were there on a Sunday, I encourage you to go to this craft show. There were so many wonderful, wonderful vendors. Go check them out. I promise it'll be worth the trip if you go. Okay, so after we left that craft show, we went over to Mean Mug. And Mean Mug is this really like cool and hip coffee shop in downtown Chattanooga. Wonderful coffee, um, really cool vibe, but amazing gluten free brownies. So if you are in the downtown Chattanooga area, I encourage you to go and check out Mean Mug, get a cup of coffee get the gluten-free brownie, and let me know how you liked it in the comment section below. All right, I think that's it, so let's get into the video.
right, so tonight I'm going to be tracing out this pattern. It's Butterick 5441. It's a vintage pattern. And it's two tops. So I think what I may do is just go ahead and trace out. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one top and it's a skirt. I'm going to trace out the top. Um, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to make this skirt just yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll have the pattern. So if I change my mind, I can make the skirt later. But for right now, I think this top is really fun. So I'm going to trace that out. Okay, so I am using this craft paper, this brown craft paper for my tracing. I don't typically use this type of paper. I use regular packing paper, which is white. But this is all they had in stock in the local um, Walmart here. So I figured I'd give that a shot. I started out with this light blue tracing paper. It's a little bit more waxy. And that just, it was not working. It was not coming out right. Let me show you guys what happened. Hang on a second. Okay, so if you can see, this is that light blue. And it was really, really light. So I started using this darker blue. It's, it's really old, but it still works. So this darker blue, and it's a little more on the chalky side versus the wax transfer paper, tracing paper. And that seems to be working a little bit better. It's still a little bit light, but it's dark enough where I can take my marker and outline this entire piece. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue using this chalky form of tracing paper. I do have it in other colors. Um, I just don't know if those colors are going to pop against this craft paper. So I'm going to try to just do the rest of the pattern pieces in this and hopefully it will work out. Okay, so today we are in Rome, Georgia. I am in the hotel, and this is just the view out the window. Um, you can kind of see there are mountains like in the distance, and to the far corner there's a school. I'm not sure if it's a college or high school. I think it's a college. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are today, out and about, and down here there's like a river and there's a walkway. I've been seeing people walk up and down. So I have set up a little table 
uh, right here. And I'm gonna trace out one of these patterns today. Um, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of light in this room, so I'm having to use the sunlight coming in from the window. So that's why I picked some projects that were a little smaller, something I could crank out a little faster. But uh, I think I'm gonna start with this one, which is, let's see, Simplicity 8229. And if I finish that one, I'll go ahead and do this one, 8711. All right, so let me break out my tracing tools and get started. Let me just take a second and show you guys the supplies that I brought with me. All of these supplies fit very easily and comfortably within either my suitcase or my book bag. And I also bought a couple of supplies when we touched down from the local Walmart. Okay, so first up is my ruler. And then I have my French curve, which this is a clear French curve. I prefer the French curves that don't have marking on it. It just makes my pattern work a little bit easier to trace out. Then I have my trusty tracing paper, which I've had forever. This tracing paper is very old, but it still works. I also have my notebook and a pen. And then I have this little case of other supplies. So let's see what's in here. All right, I've got some tape, obviously. Need the tape. I've got two tracing wheels just in case one of them breaks on me. I don't want to have to go and try to find another one. Um, plenty of markers and a pencil. An eraser. <laughs> I brought this rotary cutter um, thinking that I would use it, but I actually forgot to pack my rotary mat. I have a small rotary mat that would fit easily into my book bag. Totally forgot that. So this is kind of something that should not have been packed, <laughs> but that's okay because it still fits within this little pouch. And then I have my washers that I'm using for, ooh, that was loud, washers that I'm using for pattern weights. Oh, and I have a perforated tracing wheel, which I haven't, um, I don't think I'm going to use this this time around, but it's nice to have it. And... That is it for the items that I brought. And again, all of those little things fit into this little case. And this little case goes right into my suitcase, just with along with my toiletries. Okay, so those are all the things that I bought. Now, let's go ahead and take a thing. I'm sorry, those are all the things that I brought with me, I packed with me. And again, all of that easily, easily fits within my suitcase and my book bag. Now for the things that I bought from the local store here, <clears throat> I had to buy scissors. Oddly enough, I did not pack scissors. And I think I didn't pack these scissors because I knew I packed my rotary cutter, but I forgot my rotary mat. So I had to get, <laughs> I had to get some scissors. Um, I bought a small roll of craft paper. I think it's, what, like 12 inches wide. This, again, easily fits within my suitcase. And then I bought a larger roll of craft paper. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's pretty long. Like, I don't know, I think that's 36 inches. Maybe it's 24. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's a longer roll of craft paper. This paper is a little bit heavier than this one. Um, I got this one kind of just as a backup because... You know, you only have a limited amount of paper on this, so I thought I might need it. And believe it or not, this actually does, this large one, actually does fit in my suitcase. If I put it on the diagonal like this across my suitcase, it fits in it and I can zip it up fine. It's no problem. All right, so those are all the supplies that I brought with me, along with a few patterns that I want to get traced out. And now I'm going to start tracing a pattern.
Okay, so I'm gonna stop here because I am losing daylight and this room does not have very good lighting. So I'm gonna call it for tonight. I got the basic bra traced out the pattern pieces i think the only thing left to trace now are the underwear which i am going to trace that one out as well but for now these are the pieces uh, i think i'm just going to roll this just roll it up and store it in my suitcase put it right back in my suitcase just like that That was it that was all of the footage I was able to get of my vacation I really I had a good time I spent a lot of time outdoors um, just kind of sitting in the parks or taking nature walks so that was really fun and I enjoyed myself I was happy that I was able to get some patterns traced out I did not get all of the patterns that I brought with me traced because I didn't end up having as much free time as I thought I was gonna have but I'm happy that I got done what I got done. Most of everything came back with me in my suitcase. The only two things that I left were the the paper, the rolls of paper. I left that with some family members. Uh, so it'll be there when we go and visit family again. But both of those rolls of paper fit within my suitcase along with all of my other stuff. So if I needed to bring it back on the plane, wouldn't have been a problem. Well, it may have been a little heavy, but <laughs> I don't think it would have been a problem. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing my mini vacation, and I hope it inspired you to bring some sewing stuff along with you when you travel. And if you do, if you take sewing stuff with you, leave me your best tip in the comment section so that all of us can see how we can efficiently take our hobby with us all right guys so that's it for this video if you liked it please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and i will see you all next time bye